All right, we're here for another uh, Golf Clash video. We've got the Holiday Hills Tournament's been announced. Um, it'll start on December 9th, Monday, December 9th. And it's going to be on these particular holes. Let's go to, I don't know why they can't give us a, a little bit bigger picture here to start off. But let me give you the rundown here. So um, Nordic Fords, it's going to be hole number one. This is a par three. That's going to be hole number two in the Nordic Fords. Hole number two is going to be Nordic Fords, hole number five. Hole number three is Greenwich Point, hole number eight. Hole number four is going to be Greenwich Point, hole number one. Um, hole number five is going to be Greenwich Point, hole number five. Hole number six is going to be Greenwich Point, hole number six, or excuse me, Yep, yep, hole number six. And number seven is going to be Nordic Fords, hole number seven. Hole number eight is going to be Greenwich Point, hole number two. And hole number nine is going to be Nordic Fords, hole number nine. So let's go check it out. Now what I've done is I set up a, if I can get to the right page here, I've set up a playlist and go in and, uh, Check out my playlist. The top one should be top one should be for the uh, Holiday Hills. So I put in nine videos here from other tournaments to kind of walk through the holes. Don't worry about the names on them. If you watch them straight through, it'll be holes one through nine in this tournament. Hopefully, I got it all set up right. And you guys can help the channel out. You know, I don't normally ask people to uh, hit the subscribe and the like button down at the bottom, but I'm. I was looking at my analytics and like 52% of the people that view my channel aren't subscribers and it would really help the channel out. I'm trying to get to a thousand so that I can start live streaming the, the rounds. And if I could uh, get all of you to subscribe, that would, I'd greatly appreciate it. I appreciate all of you guys watching the videos and hopefully they're helping you out. So let's go to, uh, let's go to Golf Clash Notebook and check out hole number one in the Holiday Hills Tournament. So hole number one is going to be Nordic Fords, hole number two. And this par three right here, this is definitely a um, sniper shot. Now, you can come at this. The best thing to do is bring whatever you got, great ball guy. Now, what I've noticed, and going back and looking at the videos, I was using a sniper and a nav. And you're going to use whatever wood that you've got the best ball guide ball guide that's the key you want to be able to see that ball guide go through and you can come up here with a guardian and you can start off on the green you can use a little bit of backspin um, you can run it up to the hole i was doing with my sniper i'm doing about two top spin and with a navigator i'm doing max right side spin and i was doing a 1.2 per ring adjustment and going right up towards the hole. Now I did, here's your flag pole. Here's the cup. When I put my ball guide up there, I'm in a spot out here and I set it up with the two top spin and the max right hand side spin. And then I kind of wiggled it around a little bit until the ball guide shows up and the ball guide will actually be going kind of through the hole. It looks a little long. In the video that I posted on here, I actually was a little bit longer than I would have liked to have been. I got kind of lucky. I hit the pole. But you definitely want to be just a little bit long of the hole. And the reason is, is that in this area right here, it comes like this. You're from the tee box when you're coming in. And when you get into this landing zone out here, it dips down in and then it comes back up to the cup and the cup's on the hill. So your ball guide is looking like it's going right to the hole, but when it when it comes in and it starts going up that hill, it ends up being a little bit short. So what I what I do on this hole is I want my ball guide to be through the hole. It doesn't need to be through it a long ways, but you want to be past the hole. So as it goes up the hill, um, you still got enough speed to get you up to the cup. It's always better to be a little long than it is to be a little short, because if you're short, you never know whether that would have, you know, Especially when you're playing real golf, everybody be giving you a hard time about, uh, you know, is your wife playing in the group behind us? <laughs> so make sure your ball guide's just a little bit long through there. But you definitely want to bring whatever wood you have that has the best ball guide. And you don't have to bring a great, a big ball here. So I'm using a sniper, a nav, 
two top spin, maximum right hand side spin, 1.2 per ring. And it's a pretty straightforward shot. Now I know it should be one, but I think I'm kind of in where I'm at setting up out here. I'm a little bit towards mid club. So that's why I'm doing the 1.2 per ring. All right, that was hole number one. Pretty straightforward par three. We got an excellent chance here of getting hole in one. So whatever clubs you have in your bag, you want to uh, really, this is a hole that we do have a great shot at hole in one on. So we really want to focus on this hole when we start off because we could start the round off with a great, uh, with a great motivator. All right, the second hole in the Holiday Hills Tournament is going to be Nordic Fords hole number five. And this is a, uh, a big par five here. Okay, so I've never, this area that's out here, maybe, maybe if you're hitting from the back tees, maybe you have to hit out here. But the whole, I haven't seen a lot of people be super successful out in this area because when you get done, I mean, if you're in the, if you're out here and you got pretty good distance, you're right. So you're right down the middle here. You, it's going to be hard to get to just come up so that you can start over here. The distance is way long here. So you're going to either have to come out of this way or you're going to have to come out of this way. And it's going to make that second shot. I mean, really your odds of getting an Aldi, you know, starting off over here, even if you could get on and you're going to need a big club and you're going to need a big ball. So don't hit out here with your Quasar and think, wow, I'll just be able to get on and bring a sniper or a Viper. You're going to need your big dog if you're hitting out here, especially if you brought a, a small ball. And my motto is, is that if you, if you bring out a big dog, you brought it out for distance. So what part of power three or better? You know, if you're bringing out a big distance club, you need to bring out a big power ball. I mean, that's just how it works. Myself, I like to hit over to here. And this is a great hole for a rock. So if you have a rock in your bag, and it doesn't have to be a maxed out rock. The deal is what the difference between the rock and the quarterback, if your rock has more distance and with the buff that they just gave the rock of five yards, um, your rock more than likely will have more distance, raw distance than your quarterback or than your quarterback. And the reason that it's important is when you set your quarterback up out in this area, your first bounce is here and your second bounce is right on the edge of that sand. And you're going off in this direction. So you've got to put a little bit of curl just to bring it back to the fairway. It doesn't take all, but you got to bring a little just to bring it back out into the fairway. With a rock, your first bounce is here and your second bounce is already on the other side. And so it's much, you don't have to, this sand is really not in play when you bring a rock. But with a quarterback, you've got to have just enough and it doesn't take a lot of overpower. This is one of those shots that... You don't want to come out here and do some max overpower thing. You want to be able to repeat the shot over and over so that you end up in the same spot over and over. Because this is a layup. Wherever you're consistently ending up out here, whether it be this spot every time or this spot every time, wherever you're consistently laying up out here, the whole goal is to set this second shot up so that you can try and go for Albi. This first shot's just a pure layup. So we don't have to come out here... If it, I don't see why we would want to come out here with and try and do any overpower on this. We want to make a nice, consistent shot. And the thing I like about the rock and the quarterback is they're super accurate. So you can end up in this same spot every time you bring a extra mile. You may be here. 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 I mean, you're going to be all over the place. And so that means every time you take this shot coming up to the green, you're going to have to do something a little bit different. Whereas if you come in here and you're hitting to the same spot over and over and over, that means the second shot you can practice. And as the week gets on, you can get better and better and better at the second shot. On this hole, I'm going to bring a rock and a sniper. And on my sniper shot, and on the by the way, on my rock shot, I'm putting on one backspin. And that's getting me up here. Um, you don't have to get all the way to the front. Okay, but with one backspin, it gets me up there pretty close to the front. I don't I don't want to. This is a setup shot. I don't want to risk getting into the rough here. My whole goal is to get the second shot. My second shot's going to be with a sniper, and I've been doing 1.1 per ring. And this is another one of those holes where we're going to run the ball guy just a slightly through the cup 
So you've got your flagpole here and you got the cup. If you terminate right at the flagpole, you could end up being just a little bit short. So I want it to be just a little long of the cup. It doesn't have to be a lot long, but just a little bit long of the cup, maybe a cut, maybe two cuts on the green going at it. Pretty straightforward, um, pretty repeatable shot. You're using your you're using two 100% accurate clubs, rock, sniper. As far as ball goes, I think I am bringing a Titan here. This would be a great shot for a Kingmaker because we're taking the wind out on both shots. So if you want to increase the odds that you're going to get an Albi number one, you can bring a three wind ball for the second shot. And by bringing a three power ball, if you do end up a little bit short, you still have enough power to get up in there. Hole number three of the Holiday Inn, holiday course. Let's, let's get to another uh, page here so I don't have to switch back and forth all the time. Yeah. See if they got them up. Nope. We're going to go Greenwich Point, my favorite course in the game. We're going to be on hole number three. And this is a, oh, excuse me, hole number eight. Now, I will tell you this hole right here, if you don't get an eagle on this hole, every single time that you play it in this tournament, um, you're not going to be at the top of the charts. You have to get an eagle on this hole every single time. So normally we talk about tournaments like, you know, this type of tournament would be a minus 12 would be our minimum score. But because of this hole, um, it's minus 13. You have to get an eagle on this hole every single time you come to this hole. There's just no options. So there's, there's actually four ways that you can come at this hole. The first way is, is that you can come here and you can go over. And if you're coming here and you're using an extra mile so that you can bridge this gap and get the topspin that you need to get over, um, the ball of choice here is going to be a Marlin because you're going to have very little. Your, your minimum club is just right in here. And if you bring anything bigger than a Marlin, your minimum club is going to be in the sand. So if you want to have any of this green out here, any of this fair way to work with, you got to bring a Marlin. The other way you can come at it is you can start off over here and you can try and bring it around this way and you're putting this sand extremely into play. And this is a very technical, very difficult shot. The other way you can play this is you can do a rough bump right here and come through and this is going to be right at uh, Max Club. Now all three of these shots, this shot here, you're in a lot of cases, you're clipping the rough and you're rolling out here. You're starting off in the rough and you're rolling out here. You've got a very technical shot. And these shots can be very inconsistent. So one time you come here and you easily get the eagle. And the next time you're stuck in the rough and you end up getting a, a birdie. And this time you were out here and you didn't judge the wind right because you were right on this line. And it, and it falls down right here. So we need to make a wind adjustment if you're doing this shot right here. You're going to add on a little bit of, of wind when we do it so that you don't clip that rough in the front. So these three shots right here um, could be hit or miss. So here's how you can take the shot so that you get it every time. You can't do a ton of curl on this shot and we're going to be landing off, excuse me if I can get my pen to work, we're going to be, if I can get my pen to work, <laughs> we're going to be coming out into this area and coming like this to the green so that we're taking all of this stuff completely out of play. The only thing we're concerned about is this fairway coming up to the green, and you're either gonna end up right off the cup where you've got maybe a five or six yard putt, or you're gonna dribble off and end up down here on the fringe. What you really don't wanna happen, the worst, of the, the worst thing that can happen is, is that you don't quite make it to the fringe and you have this putt down here. It is a long putt. And it's side hill, so it's going to be one of those putts that's going to go like this to get it to the cup, and it can be very difficult. So either ideally you want to be down here on the fringe or you want to be about five, six yards away. There is a shot. You could get aggressive and try and go for the hole-in-one, but trying to bring it around more to get the hole-in-one, what you'd have to do is from the tee box, if we look at where our tee box is, in order to get that sucker to go around to come like this, you've got to put a lot of curl on it in order to do that. And you put this tree into play and these trees into play. And I tried that. I came out here and I was like, I'm going to try max curl and see if I can do it. And bam, I hit the tree. <laughs> you can put a little teeny bit of curl. Like if you look at your ball guide, um, you know, here's your perfect needle setting. And then here's your where you're, you're setting it up. You can come over to about 
where your ball's maybe halfway through or up against the edge, but you can't put any more than that. Otherwise you'll end up clipping these trees when you come through. On this shot right here, let me look at where my stuff is. Frank point, I'm using a QB and a Kingmaker. And I'm using this little peninsula out here as kind of the setup spot and I'm three rings off. I'm doing a 10% wind adjustment. So it's plus 10% on the wind. And I'm kind of balancing out my back spin and my and my right hand side spin, and I'm and I'm a couple rings off of this transitional surface. And with about one ball of curl, I'm trying to bring it around and come right at the hole. And you will be up there every single time. As the week goes on, we'll perfect the how much curl that we can get on there. And I'm probably going to start the week off by trying to do more of the back spin and less of the right hand side spin, or I may. The deal is I am, I'm trying to work myself closer to the hole so that I do have a shorter putt. But if you take off backspin and put on more side spin, um, it, where will you land out here? So I may have to take my setup spot that's here and move that back so that I'm more down in the pocket down here. So I took off some of the backspin, so it's not going to stop as fast, but I put on all of the right-hand side spin to try and bring me around to try and bleed me up. And so we'll have to work on that at the beginning of the week just to see like what the, you know, how it's playing. And this is going to be dependent on wind too. I think the last time we played here, if I remember correctly, we had a wind that was going like this. And so we want to work this area down here to get that done. But you will get an eagle on this shot over here because you're taking all the stuff out of play. So it's just a dependent on, you know, where we set our ball up and how much curl versus backspin we can put on here. You can get this done. If you've got lower developed stuff, I've got my, my lower level accounts only playing up to tour four. You can very easily get your quarterback up to level five or six, just playing T4 for a few games. And you can easily get this done. I looked at the, what my lower level account did and I eagled this hole every single time I've been on it. We need to standardize this hole. This hole, hole number three in this tournament, you have to get an eagle on every single time you come here or you're not going to be at the top of the bracket. It's going to be hard even to get in the top five if you don't get an eagle on this hole every single time. All right, hole number four in the Holiday Hills tournament is Greenwich Point, and it's hole number one. All right, this hole right here, I'm coming at it with a sniper. Sniper and a quasar. And you're going to do a 10% wind adjustment. Now, if you're playing from the back tees here, you're going to be more in the yellow line. If you're playing from the back tees here, this is a hole that you're going to have to engage this with your driver. And this is a great hole for a Thor's hammer because a Thor's hammer's got enough backspin that you can start off on this side and be able to bring it around. And it's also got lots of curl. It's got lots of, it's got all kinds of stuff. That's why the Thor's hammer, especially if you got it to level five. So if you're playing from the back tees, um, more than likely the yellow line is gonna be the preferred line. I'm going to be playing what would be the black line. I don't, I wanna try and take this sand out of play. So if you're playing from the white line, you've got rough sand rough. Here, all we have to do is deal with the rough. There is a rough bump that you can do here. And I, I played one tournament where I did the rough bump and was just as close as when I'm in the black line. This isn't the easiest hole, par three in the, in the game to get a hole in one on. But I think the black line gives you your best bet. So I'm going to use four backspin, two left side spin, plus 10% for the win. Sniper and a Quasar. Starting off in this, and I want it, once I put this stuff on here, I'm going to be pretty close to just a couple rings off of this transitional surface. And I want to put my ball guide so that it's terminating right at the cup. It's hard to get way down on your ring set here because it's downhill. That's why we're adding in this 10%. So making the wind adjustment, I really think if we could get way down in there and look at our ring set and make this wind adjustment, this hole from the black line would be a very hole in one of a hole. But when you can't get way down on your ring sets to make super accurate wind adjustments, um, you're going to find yourself, you're just, you're always right there or, you know, you're close. 
but you could make a lot more hole in ones here if we could actually see it. But we are downhill, so we're going to add on that 10%. This is a hole that we have a shot at hole in one, but it's it typically doesn't play as a high percentage hole in one type hole. Hole number five is going to be at Greenwick Point. It's par four. Let's go to uh, let's go back here. Let's see, is this hole number five as well? Maybe. Let's see if I remember this hole. Nope, that's definitely not it. Hold on one second. Hold on. All right, got my act together. So I probably told you guys that wrong earlier. So hole number five is going to be at uh, Greenwich Point. Hole number four, it's a par four. So there are several different ways that you can come at this. The yellow line um, coming out into here, extra mile as far as distance with the, now with the, if you've got a rock and you've got it up in higher levels, you've got a little bit more accurate club. It's only five yards less than the extra mile. So if you've got a maxed out or high level one, you might be able to get this done with the rock. But this is an extra mile shot with a Titan trying to get out. And you don't have to put all of the top spin on in order to get out here. Otherwise, you'll bleed off. But you can if, you're, if you've got some bigger developed rough irons you can get on from there the window will be open so that you can you know even if you ended up out here in the rough the whole goal is to start out here and then try and bleed yourself up that fairway instead of pushing the issue and i've played the yellow line for quite a while and the the shot that comes in the pin is here and you're on this hillside so if you try and go straight that it kind of it's a little bit flat, like this area here is a little bit flat leading up to the hole, but everything to the right of it is on the hill. And you can try and come straight at it from this side right here. You can use a backbone or a Saturn. Saturn gives you a few more options because you can try and start up, up on the hill and get the ball to stop. Sometimes when I've done this shot right here, when I come in, I'm using a lot of backspin and I'm actually putting on a little bit of right hand side spin so that when it hits up here, instead of left-hand side spin bringing it down, the right-hand side spin pulls it up the hill and makes it stop, and then it rolls straight down the hill towards the cup. It's a little bit tricky, but there is, a, there is an eagle shot on this hole. The other one is to get out into this area right here. This black line where you're trying to maybe come out into here and then, and then shoot it up is not in my opinion, the way to go at this hole. If you're in the upper tours and you're having some problems, maybe the black line um, where you're hitting out here and you're coming in, but you're definitely going to want, I mean, look at how the green works. When you're coming in on the black line, you're engaging this little teeny bit of green here or some green out here and then trying to bring it back towards the hole. You better bring a backspin club because you're going to have to stop the ball super quick. And there's not a lot of maneuver. You're going to have to be very close to the hole. And whenever you have to start off very close to the hole, you're obviously going to need some backspin. The white line, I play the white line, but I don't play it like it is here. I see a lot of people where they're trying to get through the middle and they're trying to land up in this area right here so that they can get into their thorn or their claw range. And what they'll do is they'll start off down in this area down here and try and force their ball up. Um, the ground out here is very, with this little mound, the mounds like this, and then, it, I mean, it falls off in every direction. So you can, if you're a little bit off, you can, your trajectory is going to be way off because if you hit it here and it was perfect, everything's fine. But if you hit it here, you're going to take a flat bounce this way. And if you hit it up here, you're going to take a bounce this way. And so you can end up being way off depending on where you hit out here. So normally when I'm trying to get into the center shoot which will get you closer into your short iron range this is long iron this is wood this is short iron if you're trying to get up here in your short iron i don't normally try and go straight at it what i do is i'll bring if you have an extra mile maximum top spin maximum left hand side spin you're going to apply a lot of curl i want to come out here and i want to set my ball up so that i'm dead center in this fairway i don't want to pinch myself on the sand I don't want to pinch myself over here. If you get down in here and you're like all pinched up, yeah, it looks great. Your ball guide's already going over this and you can see it term coming out into the fairway here and you're all good. But if you hit a great to the left, you're SOL. 
I want to be way out here in the middle. That way I can use maximum overpower. And if I hit a grate to the left or the right, it's not going to matter. I left myself tons of room on either side. I'm going to put all of the top spin, all the curl, all the side spin, everything's going to the left. So if I hit out here, it's going to come in this direction. And maybe I'll clip that rough and I'll bleed out into this fairway. And I may have a long iron instead of a short iron. So that means I'd want to bring a Saturn. But the goal is to get up here into your short iron range. For me, I'll probably bring a claw because my claw is a little more accurate than my thorn. And the three less backspin, the 97 backspin versus 100 is not going to make, is not at that point going to make a difference. And I'm going to go straight at the cup. But my goal is to get out into this area right here. And the way I'm going to do it is to come out here. And like I said, maximum left hand side spin, maximum left hand curl. Max overpower shot with a three power ball and try and bring myself over. Now your ball guide, when you take this shot, is going to be going like this. And it's gonna look like you're way off, but you need to cover this distance. And if you've got an upper developed extra mile, you can. So if you, if you come here with a level six extra mile, you've got five less yards and you've got less curl. So you may have to, you may have to pinch it a little bit on the right hand side, but don't pinch it too much. Give yourself a lot of room out there so that if you don't hit that overpower shot, perfect. You still have enough room to be able to get yourself over to the other side. And from over here doing this, it's a lot, it's a lot safer than trying to neg negotiate this fairway bunker or fairway rough bunker and this sand and all of the movement that's on the course down here. The video shows a great example. Um, in the playlist, it shows a great example of this shot right here. All right, hole number six. And hole number six, hole number six is Greenwich Point. It's a par five and it's hole number five. No, it is not hole number five, it's hole number six. All right, this is my absolute favorite hole in the game. This hole right here, when these Greenwich Point holes came out, one of the things that was different about Greenwich Point that really teaches you about the game is that it's not just about pounding the ball out there. I love it when I'm on this hole in one-on-one -on -one and my opponent comes out and, and tries to pound the ball to get way down in here. Have at it, buddy. Because as soon as you get way down in here, you're right behind those trees. <laughs> and you're in big trouble. So this is one of those holes where it's all about placement. And, and here's, okay, here's thing number one it teaches you. There's going to be a 20%. We're going to do plus 20 on the drive. And I'm setting up down here with a QB. So I'm using a QB and a sniper. What's the benefit of using a QB and a sniper? 100% accurate. I want to set myself up three rings off of this transitional surface because I'm putting curl on it. And I want to give myself enough room for that curl to become effective. If you put too much curl on it though, you could end up over curling it and ending up in the sand. This, and you can't put max curl on it because you'll end up dealing with these trees out here. So it's a fine line here in your setup, maybe half curl, 20%. Give yourself three rings off of this transitional surface between this fairway and this rough, about half curl. And all I'm trying to do is there's a spot right out here. Normally there's shadows out here. I'm not sure if in this tournament they'll put the trees back in, but there's usually a shadow that comes out here and I want to get right to that shadow. I don't want to get out here. I want to get right here. And why? Because it gives me this window past these trees so that all I can, all I have to do is hit a straight forward shot. That's shot number one. And what shot number one teaches you is, is that you don't need maximum distance. It's all about pinpoint placement. And it teaches you how to make wind adjustments. Shot number two. We're in this area right here. Our first, our first bounce. Hey, start working. We're here. Our first bounce is going to be here. I want, you can, you can set this up on the other side. And the reason that I bring I'm going to bring a uh, katana on this hole. I want that three side spin. 
So then when I get over here, I can apply that three side spin to bring me around because your ball guide's going like this and you need to cover this distance, but you need to cover it way down here. This is not a high percentage albie hole, but I have gotten a ton of albies on this doing this shot. I really like this hole. And when I come to this hole, every single time I come to this hole, I think I have an albie shot because I've hit that many albies on this hole. I love this hole. Key on shot number two. When you're here and you're shooting this shot, second bounce you can have your second bounce so that it's in the rough and you're doing a second bounce rough bump so when you put the curl on there or not curl but side spin on there it may clip the rough and then roll out onto the green and it'll roll quite a ways down there or you can have your second bounce your first bounce is here second bounce be in the clear and you're trying to swing it around with side spin you can put just a little, I mean, like rub up against the nubs, curl. But that is it, because if you put any more curl on it than that, you're going to clip these trees. That's why you don't want to overshoot this. It's super important not to overshoot this shot. You need to be in this spot up here so that you can have a nice path past those trees. Because if you're here, you're going to have to get around the trees like this, and then you're going to need to bring it this way. And so now we're trying to do an S and that's never good when we're trying to do an S with a ball in any kind of game, whether it be golf class or in the real world. Um, it's hard to get your ball to do an S when you're doing it. So you can get it to go in one direction or the other, but trying to get an S in it is not good. So don't overshoot on this hole. That's a key. You want to lay it up into this spot. And this first shot is 100% layup. You're trying to set yourself up so that you have this nice shot that you can come down to the hole. So I'm using a sniper a QB and a Katana. And it doesn't really take anything more than that. If you, um, you can come at that, the second shot with, with any, with any of the woods, but if ideally you want to bring one that gives you great ball guide, AKA sniper. I do like our chances of getting an Albie on this. As the week goes on, if I don't get at least one Albie on this hole, I'll be bummed. All right, that was hole number four. What was that? Hole number six? All right, hole number seven. We're on Nordic Fords. And we're on, it's a par three and it's hole number seven. Okay. So there's two par fours in this tournament. We haven't got to the second one yet that you absolutely have to get eagles on. You, you, ha you have to play, if we think about the minus 12 as the minimum score, um, we look at hole number three and we're gonna the next par four which is hole number eight we've got to get eagles on those so really the minimum score needs to be minus 14 per side so you're looking at a minimum of minus 28 and you cannot afford to have any shots where you drop them the other two par threes are run up par threes where we're using our woods and it's very easy to get on the green um, you have shots at hole in one and it's very easy to get up there and be safe about it. But this is one of those holes that people are going to push the limit when we talk about risk versus reward. And they're going to end up either not calculating for the win correctly and ending up in the rough over here. They're going to end up in the rough over here. Or they're going to end up in the sand somewhere on this. And they're going to end up getting pars here. And this is one of those holes that I want to give myself a shot at hole-in-one. But I want to get a birdie every single time I come to this hole. Every single time. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to start off on the green side. I'm not going to mess with any of this stuff. I want all of this stuff out. There are some holes that are worth risking it for, but I want to start off over here and work my way in and try and dial that shot. So what I've done on this, I've played this hole quite a few times. I'm blue ring off on the transition between the rough and the fairway. And I'm white ring off between the fringe and the green. And so it puts my ball guide, you know, in this area right here. I'm going to put on maximum backspin and whatever's left in side spin, right hand side spin. So my ball guide's looking like it's doing this. And then I'm going to put on maximum curl. So I've tried to set this shot up so that I'm doing max curl and backspin. And then it's going to leave me like three right hand side spin. I'm at whatever's left. Okay, whatever's left, whatever's left and right side spin. 
And then if I find, so what I found when I originally came to this hole is my original setup was I was blue ring off and then I was like white ring up here. Well, my original setup, I was blue ring all the way around. And what I found was, is that when I came up, I was coming like this and it was drifting back, but I didn't have enough speed to get back to the hole. And so I was somewhere in this neighborhood um, to the right of the cup. So I moved this out so that I was clear ring off instead of blue ring off. And what it did was, is it came in here and then it started putting me out like this and I was still four or five yards off. So then I moved it out again and I put my white ring out here and set the shot up exactly the same way. And now it's coming in and it's coming right at the cup. I have hit several hole in ones on this hole um, taking this shot. I've hit them in one on one, but I haven't hit them in, in tournaments yet. But I am like right there at it. I mean, I have a look at it. My odds of getting a hole in one here aren't the greatest, but I can guarantee you that this shot right here will get you a birdie every single time. So you can practice these shots out here and and get used to taking them. But if you have one epic fail where you end up in the rough or in the sand or on this rough or in the sand out here, you have one epic fail. My recommendation would be is to, you can't afford an epic fail on a par three. Okay? Not when we have a tournament where the minimum score in the opening and the weekend round is going to be minus 28. That's the minimum. So, I would come over to this area right here with a sniper and a katana. Or excuse me, a Saturn and a katana. Where am I at here? Saturn and a katana and go straight at it. And that's how I'm going to start my week off. And I'm going to keep dialing that shot in because I know that I can get a hole in ones with that shot. And I know that it's a 100% guaranteed birdie. I'm hitting 1.9 per ring on my Saturn. And I don't have anything on here for a wind adjustment, so I'll have to look at that. But I don't think that we're making a wind adjustment here other than just our standard um, 1.9 per ring. Hole number eight in the Holiday Hills tournament is going to be Greenwich Point. Hole number two. Let's go to Greenwich Point. And it's hole number two. All right, this is the other hole that we're going to have to get an eagle on every single time we come here. And the way to do that is on the black line. So I've hit this shot using several different combinations. In the video that I posted on there, um, I was still kind of working it out because I was trying to standardize this, but I'm not gonna really be messing around on this, but when, I'm gonna come out here with my extra mile. And now that my rock You've got an upper developed rock. You could actually use a rock and well, maybe you can, maybe you can't because a rock doesn't have quite as much topspin as a maxed out extra mile. So extra mile might still be the club that you need to bring. Now you could, if you've got an up, if you've got a level four, level five apocalypse, um, or you've got some of those clubs, you could, you, you're going to have the same kind of top spin and you could come over here with one of those and they are a little bit more accurate. Uh, if you come out here with an extra mile, I'm going to bring a kingmaker. I'm not going to mess around with it. I'm trying to set it up so that I don't have to do any overpower. Now, in the video, I think I was like two rings off of this transitional surface. But what I'm going to work on at the beginning of the week is when I'm out into this area, um, I want to be about three rings off, max top spin. I may put just a slight bit of overpower as far as like rubbing up against the nubs. I'm, what I really want to do is be able to take the wind out. I don't want to have the wind in play on this. So I want to take the wind out because I don't want to start the weekend or start the tournament off with a 2.5 in the qualifier and then have a 5.0 in the, in the opener and then have a 3.6 in the weekend and expect the same result with all three of those wins. So what you could do if you want to leave some wind in is just leave leave two and a half or leave two. So if you had a 2.5, you take out a quarter ring. If you have a 5.0, you take out three miles per hour. So you take out a ring and a half. You got a 3.6, you take out um, three quarters of a ring. And so you're always leaving a couple in. So you are still getting a little bit of push from the wind, but you're at least making it consistent so that if you can, once you dial it in like, hey, I need five and a half or four and a half or however much top spin, then you you know you're going to be consistent because you're not counting on this wind to help you. 
because you're going to get a different result if you're counting on the win. When we're shooting those shots where we have a big fairway and you're just trying to get max distance and it doesn't matter, you can leave the wind in and play that game. But when we're having a shot like this where we're trying to hit the first bounce here and then rough bump it and get through that rough so that we can end up on the green out here. And, and where do you need to end up out here? Anywhere. I mean, if you're in the fairway, you're on the fringe, you don't really want to have one of those long putts. You know how this game works. You can get on the green and have one of those long putts and you can't even get to it. So sometimes it's risky to be on the green with a long putt. A lot of times I find myself down here at the bottom where I'm on the fringe where it came through and it bled through and it went a little bit long. I'm normally off in this direction. So the reason I'm going to bring it out this week and I'm going to start off the week where I'm about three rings off is so that I can apply a little bit more curl and try and get the ball to come like this so that I'm more up here on this side of the green than over on the lower back side down in this area. But this is a hole right here. As the week goes on, we'll standardize this hole and get, get it super dialed in. But you have to, you're going to have to get an eagle on this par four, just like on hole number three, every single time you come here. Um, if you want to have any shot at being up towards the top of the bracket, because you know that the people at the top of the bracket are going to eagle. They're looking at, you know, minus 14 is the minimum score every time they come around the bend. So you're looking at a minus 28 just for the minimum. Then you got to start picking stuff up if you want to get ahead. Uh, this hole right here is definitely one we want to work on. This is a hole that I'm going to be really focused on as the week goes on because I want to standardize this beginning shot so that there's no more variables. I hit the shot, I'm on the green, I make my putt, I make my pitch, and I move on. And for those of you out there going, oh, you guys are just, hey, that's why we practice. Hey, this would be no different than if I was coming here in the real world. I don't know how many hours I've spent looking at course layouts so that I can go, hey, I want to put my ball over here because that gives me a great shot to come in. And and spent time doing this exact same thing in the real world so that I could uh, help increase my my odds of getting a better score when I'm out there playing on the course. So that was Greenwich Point, hole number two. That was uh, hole number eight in the Holiday Hills tourney. So hole number nine in the Holiday Hills tourney is going to be Nordic Fords, and it's going to be hole number nine. And this can be a very, <laughs> so this is another one of those holes with some of the club changes. And I'm, I'm really curious, Golf Clash came out with the, you know, the max club card trading, um, which I'm still undecided about. I mean, I think as a player, you know, looking at the, all of the clubs that I have maxed out, it's, it's, you know, obviously if you're a player and somebody goes, Hey, I'm going to give you a buff on six of your, your rares and I'm going to give you enough extra cards to be able to max all the rest of them out and be able to max out all of your epics that you need cards for. Um, you know, the ones that are really usable, Hey, you know, as a player, Hey, sure. But as a community though, I really, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's a good thing for the game overall, especially for people who are new that are just getting involved in the game. And especially for those people that are already irritated that people have better clubs than them. Um, there's a lot of people like me that have been playing for a long time that have, you know, I've got over 100,000 common cards, extra common cards. You take guys that have been playing Masters like Tommy, they're going to have level 9 and level 8 epics immediately and then start buying balls. Every club in their bag will already be maxed out again. And so you're never going to be able to catch up to those players. They've just been playing for too long. But this is a great hole, I think, for the new and improved rock because your goal is to get out into this area. And you don't have to get all the way up here, but the farther you can get up here, the better you increase your albi shot. Because when you're back in this area and you're coming in, you're kind of limping into this right down here in this corner. If you're not getting a lot of distance and you're finding yourself more in the mouth, you're going to have to bring a big dog and you're going to need to bring a big ball. And you'll barely be able to get on here. We've had wind the last few tournaments that was moving in this direction. And so you'll be able to use that wind to kind of push you back out into the fairway to bring you back around. And if you find yourself down in this area, don't don't press the issue to try and force the issue for an Albi. It's going to be a extremely low percentage Albi shot if you're back in this area. The whole goal is to get yourself up here on the green or on the fringe, make your putt, make your chip, get your eagle, and move on to the next hole. 
If you want to increase your odds, you want to get way up here in the front. If you get up here in the front and you've got a sniper, you'll be able to start, your red line is going to be up in this area, and you'll really be able to use that ball guide on that sniper to dial it to the hole. Now we're going to be dealing, if they give us the same kind of wind, and the last couple times we've had this tournament, this is the wind we had. So if you, with this wind, it's, it's always hard to make these adjustments when we're doing side wind, especially when you're dealing with the wood. But you will have an opportunity, a much better opportunity to go for Alvi the farther you can get up into this hole. So the thing I like about the new and improved rock is it hits 231 versus what, 230, what is it, 236 for an extra mile, a maxed out extra mile. So if you got a maxed out rock, it only hits five yards less. Now it doesn't have as much top spin, but if you do overpower on a rock to try and get it up here, or if you use a four power ball, your odds of getting through this shoot and getting up here are much better because it's a 100% accurate club. You definitely want to use the most accurate driver you have that's going to give you the best shot of getting up here. This is not a hole for, you can use a big topper because it's got all that top spin. And traditionally, if you brought a, an extra mile and a big topper and a Titan, you get more yardage with the big topper. The problem with the big topper is, is that your landing zone's out here and your entire run is through here. And this is one of those holes that I don't normally, if you watch my game on a regular basis, I don't normally do overpower shots where I'm just going straight forward. I'm just pulling the ball straight back and trying to go straight forward. There's always some kind of movement or max movement. There's always some kind of movement on the ball so that if I hit a great to the left or right, it really doesn't matter. You know, if you've got movement on your ball and you hit a great to the right and you put all this stuff to the left, the ball's still going to go to the left. It's just going to start off a little bit more to the right. But this is one of those shots that when you're hitting it, it's a straightforward overpower shot. So if you hit great to the left, your first bounce is here, you're going to bleed off. If you hit great to the right, you're going to bleed off. And so it's a it's a definitely a hole at the end of our round where we need to hit that drive shot perfect or we need to make sure that we bring a club that's super accurate so that if we hit a great to the left to the right, we can still end up coming through cleanly. So I would definitely start my shot off in the very center of the fairway. So that if you hit a great to the left or right, you still got room. If you've got four power balls, um, this is definitely a hole that a four power ball will help you because especially if you're bringing one of those accurate clubs, because you can get farther out here and the farther out here you can get the easier the second shot's going to be so that you can engage. Now, if you're finding yourself out in this area, excuse me, out in this area a lot where you're having that distance, then that four power ball is going to help you because you'll be able to pick up a little bit more yardage. Let's say you're using a QB and with the front roll, you're only able to get out to here. Well, if you bring out a four power ball, you know, it's going to help you pick up a little bit of distance, but it's really going to help you on the other side so that you have that better look at it. If you've got lower developed stuff, you know, like when we talk about balls, you know, if you've got stuff and you're finding yourself a little short and you're not getting that second shot look that you're looking for, bring out a five power ball. So this is one of those holes that we could bring out a bigger ball than just what our standard our standard um, balls are. I'm going to be going at this with an extra mile and a kingmaker. Excuse me. I'm going to be going at it to start off the week with a rock, with a rock and a kingmaker just so that I can see how far I can get out here. See if I'm getting enough distance to engage my sniper so that I can get the use of all of that ball guide. If I can't, the last time we played this, I switched to a four power ball so that I could start off with my super accurate club. And then even though I didn't get as much distance out here as I would have got with an extra mile and a three power ball, that four power ball got me so that my red line was here and I had a great look at the hole for Alby. Not a high percentage Alby hole, but, you know, you want to give yourself a good look for it. That's the whole goal on all these holes is to put yourself in the right spot so that you can give yourself the best look at picking up a shot. If you pick it up, woohoo! If you don't pick it up, great. We got our birdie. We got our eagle. Go to the next hole. Put yourself in the perfect spot and keep doing that. And, um, and you will eventually start picking those shots up. If you're new to Golf Clash, the whole goal is to play in the fairway. Um... If you've got lower developed stuff, you've got to stay in the fairway. So it's better to be clean and stay in the fairway. And so you can come out here with your 
accurate stuff in a big dog, and a big dog has tons of curl and tons of topspin. And you can start off on this side, and you can run it up there. You may have a little bit of difficulty getting all the way to the green, but this is a fairly easy chip, especially if you have a club that's got a lot of topspin. So like a wedge, like a firefly or a rapier. This is going to be a hole that's going to cause people that are, this hole at the end of the round is going to ruin a lot of people because they're going to be pushing the issue with an extra mile or an inaccurate club. And if you can come out here with an accurate club and end up down this, I know with my rock, I can hit a great to the left, to the right and still end up down here. And that's going to be the goal. All right. That was, uh, that was just kind of a basic stuff on the holiday Hills tournament as it comes out. Monday, I'll uh, run a couple practice rounds and post those holes so that we can see um, what we have and see them when they're out there. Um, keep an eye on Golf Clash Notebook. Hopefully, they'll put up the, the tournament here in the next day or so so that you can really take a look at the holes. You won't have to jump around as much as I was. And check out the channel. Subscribe if you're already not a subscriber. And you can check out the uh, playlist. Maybe. Where are the playlists? Hey, get over there. Recently added, check out the playlist for the uh, Holiday Hills Ricky walkthrough, and I'll put this video right at the top. Hey, thanks for watching.